going to build a 555 timer knot gate on this breadboard so that you can judge for yourselves how easy or difficult this breadboarding electronics is. Can you see the half moon there? Yes, that shows that that's the way round that this chip needs to go. Place it on the breadboard. I've chosen this area here just to the right of that gap. I've checked that they're all lined up there. The legs are lined up over these holes so when I press down it goes in nice and easily and nothing will get bent. Always on a 555 timer, ground is connected to pin 1. Just put that link in. I use a black link for ground. It's The, the colour of the link doesn't affect the way it works. 8, counting round 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Pin 8 on the chip is always connected to positive. And there we are, we've done that. And the next thing is um, pin 3 is always the output. So count along 1, 2, 3 any of those will do. I can put this resistor in anywhere. The resistor is needed to control the current through the LED otherwise it will burn out. With the voltages that we use, about 6 volts, um, a resistor anywhere between 100 ohms and 1000 ohms is is fine. It's not that critical. Now I'm aware that you can't, you, you may be able to see the resistor has gone into into column 3, pin 3 of the chip. You may not be able to see this other end. It's actually in this column here just to the right of that gap and it's very important that the LED goes in the same column. It must join with the end of that resistor. I know that the shorter lead is the cathode and that goes into ground. You may, can you also see the flat on the LED there? There's a flat ground on the LED. Sometimes it's visible, sometimes not. That also goes towards ground. Pop that in there. The next thing we do is to connect pin 6 to pin 2 with a link across the top. Again, the the colour of this link isn't important, it's just wire inside. And when I connect up, hopefully we'll learn something to our advantage. I'll press the, the battery in to connect the circuit. We saw it instantly flick on and it goes off. If I now insert this link into pin 2, hopefully we'll be able to see one of the problems with modern integrated circuits. Yes, there we are, just touching the end of that. It's picking up stray electrical signals that are all around us from electrical devices in our rooms and this could cause problems if we want a reliable circuit we can't allow inputs just to float and pick up odd spurious signals like this so what we need to do we use resistors to hold the input either high or low in this case I'm using a 1 meg resistor and I'm going to pull it towards the positive rail if I used a metal link I wouldn't be able to short it down to ground. That would be a complete short circuit across the battery. But look on this resistor as kind of an elastic band that's holding it towards the, um, the plus volts, but allowing me, if I want to, to take it low. If I do it this way, you'll be able to see. Put that into pin two. The resistor at the moment is holding it high, and as it's a not gate, that means the output's low. If I make the input low with this link, we can't see, my hand's always in the way, the output goes high. This is what a knock gate does. Input low, output high. Input high, because it's being pulled by the resistor, the output goes low. So we've learned how to do a knock gate, but also the importance of taking into account stray electrical signals that can affect modern electronics.